My father was the astronomer Carl Sagan. He and my mom, writer, producer, Andrian, collaborated on dozens of books, essays, and a television series called Cosmos. We know we are approaching the grandest of mysteries. They taught me and millions of others that science wasn't just a set of facts to be compared and contrasted with other philosophies, but instead a way of testing ideas to see which stand up to scrutiny. My parents raised me to be skeptical, but not cynical. I learned that even though life is finite, really because it's finite, just being alive at all is profoundly worthy of celebration. Traditionally, the infrastructure for this kind of thing has been religion. So what about the rest of us? How do we navigate life's most important moments? Beneath the specifics of theology and culture, there is so often a kernel of a scientific phenomenon. Whether it's the changing of the seasons or the changes in our bodies, our species celebrates the same milestones across the globe. But traditions don't have to be old. You can invent one tomorrow. And each family must navigate this for themselves. Find what represents the way they see the world instead of just going through the motions. My husband and I still honor the traditions of our forebears, but we do it in new ways that reflect our own worldview. My hope is to teach my daughter to face our reality as we understand it through science and find the astounding exquisiteness in it. Imagine telling a child that there is a secret code in their blood that connects them with their ancestors. Imagine if we taught children that the splendor of every long summer day is a gift from the axial tilt of the earth. Science can provide us with that deep sense of awe we crave, that connection to each other and to the universe, that feeling of being one small part of the vast grandeur, as we all try to navigate the mysterious beauty and terror of being alive.